Memoirs of Captain Paul Cuffey. On the first of the present month of August, 1811, a vessel arrived at Liverpool with a cargo from Sierra Leone. The owner, master, mate, and whole crew of which are free blacks. The master, who is also the owner, is the son of an American slave and is said to be very skilled both in trade and navigation, as well as to be a very poise and moral character. It must have been a strange and animating spectacle to see this free and enlightened African entering as an independent trader with his black crew into that port, which was so lately the nidus of the slave trade. Edinburgh Review for August 1811. We are happy in having the opportunity of confirming the above account, and at the same time of laying before our readers an authentic memoir of Captain Paul Cuffey, the master and owner of the vessel above, alluded to, who sailed from this port on the 20th with a license from the British government to persecute his intended voyage to Sierra Leone. The father of Paul Cuffey was a native of Africa, whence he was brought as a slave into Massachusetts. He was there purchased by a person named Slocum and remained in slavery a very considerable portion of his life. He was named Cuffey, but as it is unusual in those parts, took the name of Slocum as expressing to whom he belonged. Like many of his countrymen, he possessed a mind far superior to his condition. Although he was diligent in the business of his master and faithful to his interests, yet by great industry and economy, he was able to purchase his personal liberty. At the time, the remains of several Indian tribes who originally possessed the fright of soil resided in Massachusetts. Cuffey became acquainted with a woman descended from one of those tribes named Ruth Moses and married her. He continued in habits of industry and frugality and soon afterwards purchased a farm of 100 acres at the point in Massachusetts. Cuddy and Ruth had a family of 10 children. The three eldest sons, David, Jonathan, and John, are farmers in the neighborhood of West Point, filling respectable situations in society and endowed with good intellectual capacities. They are all married and have families to whom they are giving good educations. Of six daughters, four are respectably married, while two remain single. Paul was born on the island of Cutter Humpker, one of the Elizabeth Islands near New Bedford in the year of 1759. He was about 14 years of age when his father died, leaving a considerable property and land, but which being at the time unproductive, afforded but little provisions for his numerous family, and thus the care of supporting his mother and sisters devolved upon his brothers and himself. At this time, Paul conceived that commerce furnished to industry more ample rewards than agriculture, and he was conscious that he possessed qualities which, under proper culture, would enable him to pursue commercial employments with prospects of success. He therefore entered at the age of 16 as a common hand on board a vessel destined to the Bay of Mexico on a whaling voyage. His second voyage was to the West Indies. But on his third, he was captured by a British ship during the American War, about the year 1776. After three months' detention as a prisoner at New York, he was permitted to return home to Westport, where, owing to the unfortunate continuance of liabilities, he spent about two years in his agricultural pursuits. During this interval, Paul and his brother John Coffey were called upon by the collector of the district in which they resided for the payment of a personal tax. It appeared to them that by the laws and constitution of Massachusetts, taxation and the whole rights of citizenship were united. After laws demanded of them the payment of personal taxes, the same laws must necessarily and constitutionally invest them with the right of representing and being represented in the state legislature. But they had never been considered as entitled to the privileges of voting at elections, nor of being elected to places of trust and honor. Under these circumstances, 
workers. They refused the payment of the demands. The collector resorted to force of the laws, and after many delays and detentions, Paul and his brother deemed it most prudent to silence them by paying the demands, but they resolved, if it were possible to obtain the rights which they believed to be connected to taxation. They presented a respectful petition to the state legislature. For some individuals, it met with a warm and almost indignant opposition. A considerable majority was, however, favorable to their object. They perceived the propriety and justice of the petition, and with an honorable magnanimity, in defense of the prejudices of the time, they passed a law rendering all free persons of color liable to taxation according to the established ratio for white men and granting them all the privileges belonging to the other citizens. This was a day equally honorable to the petitioners and the legislature, a day which ought to be gratefully remembered by every person of color within the boundaries of Massachusetts in the names of John and Paul Cuffey should always be united with this recollection.